Hello, my darlings. Madam Raven here with a new series for you by Gelfwen, whom I just adore her stuff. Um, if you like this series or this video, please like and subscribe and let me know. These are the collected tales. The first one is called The White Dog. Every place has those tales. Things spoken of when children are safely asleep. Tales told while out at activities the young'uns weren't invited to. Be it a hunting trip, fishing, or just gathering around a fire drinking beer and shine. Those tales change and alter over time. New ones come to life and old ones fade into the mists of time. I can't say why, but I decided I wish to collect those tales still being spoken before they are lost forever. Sometimes I wish I had decided to become a farmer. Then I think of the missing field and sigh. I'll tell that tale soon. This was the first I heard. The White Dog. Emma was exactly what one would expect. Early forties, not fat, but thickened by her four children and a life of work in the land. She and her whole family had lived here for so long, no one ever remembered a time her family hadn't been in these rolling hills. She had sun-bleached hair that was thinning, skin that was half leather from the sun. Still, she might have been pretty in her youth. Now she was just like many of the women that lived out here. Worry and hard times had aged her. Still, her eyes were a rich chocolate brown and scared. She had an ancient family Bible hugged to her chest and paper sticking wildly out of it, angles. Thing was big enough to make my table groan as she finally relinquished it to the scratched wood surface. She sat and shifted. We went through the game of offering refreshment three times before it was accepted. She didn't touch the glass of lemonade, but rather shifted uncomfortably. She wanted to talk, but was terrified to do so. My boy says you want to know stories about things that ain't natural. I nodded. I want to collect the legends and myths before they are lost. I ain't sure this is a legend or a myth, but it ain't natural. I ain't sure where to start, so guess I'll start with Great Aunt Caroline. She was my granny's oldest sister. She opened the family Bible and pointed to some faded scrawls. Caroline Sue was listed as the first of six children. Myrtle was granny. The fourth name, with two boys in between. She was the first I ever heard of. You know how kids can run in when not expected or be awake when they ain't supposed to be. Granny wouldn't let no one talk about Caroline. But I heard the name one night and may have never remembered it if it hadn't been for Linda. Granny was apologizing that she that she just couldn't stand being near Linda, not when it was Caroline's eyes looking at her. Emma fluttered her hands and drew out a picture of three young girls, all with pale blonde hair, two with dark brown eyes, the oldest with the most amazing pale blue eyes. One could have thought them sisters, they were so close in looks. And I'm making a mess of this. This is Linda, Bonnie, and myself. We were cousins, only a couple months apart. Linda was the oldest. She's the blue-eyed one. Ain't no one in the family had eyes like that, but Linda did, and I guess Aunt Caroline did. I took the picture and looked at it closer. I was right. Once she and her cousins had been pretty girls, blonde, healthy, carefree. No, the blue eyes were focused not on the camera, but on something behind the person taking the picture. Fear was in those eyes. The smile, fake. I nodded again and handed the picture back. Linda was being hunted. I didn't understand it then. She was just strange, I thought. Hate being outside at night. Hated open windows. Always drew the curtains tight. Bonnie and I teased her. Wish we hadn't now, but... 
back to Caroline. I remember the name, and then I saw it in the Bible. Only you notice, ain't no death date listed. But I grew up always knowing she was dead, but nothing more. When I got old enough, I started digging. She handed me a folded and somewhat worn paper, a printout from a newspaper microfilm. Caroline had died at 17. Cause of death? Animal attack. There was a picture, black and white, pale hair and pale eyes staring out at the photographer. Emma opened the Bible to the front page again, lines upon lines of names. Then I noticed something else. You see, every mother makes a Bible for her children when they get married, and they copy everything from the start. So even though this one ain't that old, it has my family going right back to before this was a state even. Look here, that's would have been Granny's great aunt. She pointed to a name. Marianne. No birth or death date. Firstborn daughter. And here and here, every other generation. Firstborn girl. She was right. Always a girl's name. Always a firstborn daughter. But I also noticed that there was no Linda at the bottom. Where's Linda on this? Emma pointed to her grandmother's children. Three boys. Linda was born to Tom, his only child. Pointing to the first name on the list. Frank was my pa. He was two years younger than Tom. You see the names? Again, she looked flustered. I'm getting ahead of the story again. So, Caroline... I finally got to hear the tale. Granny's youngest brother was not in his right mind toward the end. We don't throw our elders away like they do today. So he ended up with my pa, and I was the one that had to take care of him most of the time. One night he told me everything. Caroline was considered touched in the head, a nervous and fearful girl. He was begging her forgiveness calling out he didn't know she was telling the truth about the dog. He didn't mean to get her killed. You see, he was playing a prank on her, locked her outside one night when it was just the two of them. The next morning she was found in the barn, torn apart. Emma started pulling out more copies of pages, diaries, ancient newspapers, official reports. I found four more of the names all dead before they were twenty, all died of animal attack. I won't claim to ever be that smart, but I can tell you it ain't exactly natural that five girls all died because of animals. And here in the diary, note that they are remarking it is a shame Caroline was born with the cursed eyes. Emma handed me more pictures. The three girls were growing up, Christmas trees, Easter bonnets, and birthday cakes. Linda was pale and worried. Never looked at the camera. You know, I don't... Her pale eyes held a fear in them that was visible. Linda saw it. We didn't, but we heard it one day. An old hound, past his prime, wanted to lay about and beg dinner. We went down to the creek, picking berries and trying to stay cool. That hound was following for once. It was getting late, and Linda was acting stranger than normal. Suddenly, that hound was bristled up like a bottle brush, and she was telling us to run. She herded us towards the house, closest one to us. That hound followed behind, growling and stopping to challenge something before running back to us. But I didn't see it. We ran through the Bingham field and up the hill. That old hound wasn't allowed in the house, but he came right in with us. Linda still wasn't happy. It was an old house with a lot of windows. She pushed us towards the bathroom. We protested it was too hot. Why? Still, she pushed us and that hound into that tiny room with only one itty bitty window, and she wouldn't let us open it. Bonnie and I ended up in the tub. Linda and the hound were in the floor, her hugging it for dear life. It growled and bristled, and then Bonnie and I heard something walking outside the door. Nails clicking on the old wood floor first. 
then digging and tearing at the floor and door. She was looking at one of the pictures, tears running down her cheeks. They were only ten years old, and Linda already knew to hide when it came. We got damn quiet about then, and didn't care the room was a furnace, just hugging one another close. When it got silent and the hounds started to snore, she finally told us. It was a big, white dog. Really big. But it wasn't really a dog. And if we ever saw it, we should run and hide. It had been chasing her for as long as she could remember. Her parents found us still in the bathroom. The whole family was out looking for us. At first, they were mad about us not being where we were supposed to be. She said a wild dog had chased us from the creek and got inside. There were claw marks all over the door. So our papas were cursing and got their rifles, going to hunt that damn dog what was trying to get their kids. But I could see it in Linda's eyes. She knew they wouldn't find it. She knew they wouldn't believe what was really happening. She was twelve when it almost got her, tore a chunk out of her hip. She claimed it was a strange dog that attacked her while riding her bike. At fourteen, she told us she was going to leave as soon as she got big enough. At seventeen, she married a man ten years older than her and moved halfway across the country. Then she left him, moved farther away three years later. Then, nothing. We never heard from Linda again. Emma picked up another envelope of photos. I married, had my three girls, then a boy. You ever told me I could love another baby more than those four, I would have called you a fool. And then my oldest had a baby. There's something sweet about your baby in your arms, but your grandbaby? Oh, I lost my heart to that little girl. She handed me the picture of a little girl. Blonde ringlets and ice pale blue eyes. She has Linda's eyes, which I thought was amazing. Just an odd quirk of genetics, my daughter said. She's two and a half talks real good for her age. Last month we had a family get together. As it got dark she got real scared and started crying. The bad dog was going to get her. Emma looked up at me with tear-stained face. Linda had no sister. I was the next oldest girl and now that thing is hunting my grandbaby. I'm telling you this because I need to know how to stop it. Please tell me if you ever heard anything else like this. So close. This rape.